Now, if you watched the first part of this little single leg standing thing, we're headed towards a biomechanical reality and an awful lot of your clients, which is valgus and the associated thing called Q-angle. And no, valgus and Q-angle are not the same thing. Why is all this gonna be important? A, it's really, really common, these issues. B, we're leading up to a third part in this, we're talking about why single leg squats are a terrible assessment. They're not part of the biomechanical reality that you're built to do. Don't get me wrong, lots of people can do them. Doesn't mean it's good for them, doesn't mean it's viable after a certain degree of motion. But here's where we must start. We must start with this idea of valgus. So here's a line, I'm gonna, I've got this line right here representing the line between your hip, your knee, so it's a line of force between, if it'll stay over here, come on guys, if it'll stay between your hip joint, your knee joint, and your ankle joint. And ideally, ideal world, that would remain a straight line. You see what I've got right there? But because you have a neck to your femur, because you have a neck to your femur, there is an offset, if you will, to the femur itself, meaning your femur does not follow the line of force that exists between the three joints. That separation in there is creates a normal valgus. In other words, it looks like the knee is bent inward, headed towards a knock need kind of relationship, but it's a normal. So there's a normal amount of valgus in any human that has a neck to their femur, okay? Now, what can happen due to a variety of things can be an increase in valgus where this foot appears, the tibia appears to be more lateral, and what happens in the process is this, if we made this the quadricep, and bring this down here, and now this line is rep representing the quadriceps attachment along the femur, stops off at the patella, and then goes over to the tibial tuberosity. You see this blue angle would represent the Q angle. So the Q angle is a function of, influenced by, if you will, the amount of valgus that exists in someone. You can also imagine that valgus would change a lot of things like potential wear on the knee, potential influence on the medial collateral uh, ligament, but it also influences this degree of bend of forces, because a muscle is all about force, the force of tension. So this angle here creates a resultant by which the uh, patella is skewed or forced laterally. And some people call that lateral tracking, and that can have a variety of influences in that as well. But the more valgus someone has, the more the patella is asked to ride outward, forced against the lateral side of the trochlea here. And, uh, whoops, there, there is another, a second influence in the Q angle. The Q angle is also influenced by not only the amount of valgus in the individual, but the amount of rotation at the knee. So there are two direct influences, and therein, two things we need to take into consideration before we start exercising someone with a considerable valgus. And I see it on all these ridiculous shows like The Biggest Loser, where these trainers obviously know nothing about the human body because they're having people that weigh 400 pounds and have severe, severe valgus, which means crazy forces uh, and poor congruency inside of their knee, the actual knee joint, as well as patellofemoral forces going laterally. They're having them jump and they're having them lunge and they're having them squat and they're having them run and they're having them do plyometrics and all these things on a knee that is completely intolerant of those forces. And that, to me, honestly, is malpractice. Not under, thinking it's all about the exercises you do, the, car, the cardio you get, the calories you burn at the expense of these joints. Guys, when your joints are gone, you don't get to do any of that fun stuff anymore. There are things to take care of first. And those things include intra-joint integrity and understanding joint forces. So there's the biggest thing to understand right here from this. Valgus and how it can progressively change the forces that creates in the knee itself, but also how that affects this thing that we've come to know as a Q angle, Q for quadricep, and how that changes the influence, the, uh, alters the forces on the patellofemoral joint in and of itself.